Mheshimiwa Rais, ulinzi wa heshima iliyopo mbele wako umeundwa na maofisa na askari wa chunga sheria na amri wa nchi Uganda. Wamesimama kwa mistari miwili mwaka 48 na nane tayari kwa kaguzi wako Mheshimiwa Rais. Good afternoon, everyone. I kindly request that we do rise up for the national anthems and then we shall have prayer to be led by SST Lutard. You need 20 housing units or semi-detached where one family is one wing, another one is another, uh, in which you need to 10 plus an office plus the lock-up. So you plan for that, how to house your people. You need to handle the health. Can we have a medical assistant per, per station? Or what? What is the plan for the health? You need to have a plan for the health. But I don't think it will be a problem. You can plan for it. Even if we were to recruit an additional 1,600 1, medical assistants plus Oh, they can go there. But I was thinking of having our own internal. You can also study. You can study. But you may be right that 20 people with the medical assistant not be idle. We will not be idle having all these people. Only these 20. We will not be unemployed. Not only you can, you can look at it. In order to relieve the policemen, of social pressures, I would recommend a police secondary school per zone, per zone, per zone, a zone like Ankore, so that the children of the police, because I introduced this in the army, because I could see that the soldiers were getting smaller salaries, what will happen to, to their children? So from the beginning, I, I told them to, be, to build the army secondary school, army schools, primary, but also secondary. For the police, because they are scattered, you cannot build a, a primary school for 20 families. Uh -uh. At the primary level, they could share with the civilians. 
But at the secondary school level, you, you could build army sec uh, police secondary schools per zone. Soga, one secondary school, even if they are boarding. Those zones are 18 in the whole of Uganda. And this school could admit four children per, per family, only four. If you have uh, more, if you have got strength to have children, surely you, you must. <laughs> you must know how to look after them. So for us, we just take four in our, uh, our police secondary school, in, which would have to be boarding, because they are far away from, <coughs> from their parents. They would have to be boarding. So you could end up with 18 police secondary schools, body, uh, in the whole country. Because Buganda used to have three zones. They used to have what they used to call Mengo, Mubende, and Masaka zone. So that, and we could even arrange that uh, children of the, of the police in the primary could set it free. They don't pay as long as, as it's a government second school, uh, primary school. In any case, all children are supposed to study free. It's, it has been, school fees have been imported by, by these local leaders. But for the family police, four, four children, they could study free so that the policeman is released of this burden of family, children, education, and so on. Then, is through production of goods and services by the citizens. So therefore, the police need to protect the wealth and efforts of the people so that they can create their prosperity through production. And in order to do that, fortunately, I have already done enough work for you. Because when I came from uh, the bush, one of the first things I did was to strengthen the laws. Like the law against the firemen. The firemen was not regarded as a serious offense, but I think for us we made it even uh, punishable by death, I think. Uh. So, if we have strengthened the law, the law is already there. You implement it. Somebody charged with, the, with, with the murder, somebody charged with the defilement. Today I was reading in the papers A school director. There are new words now. What is a school director? Is he headmaster or what? <laughs> what is he? Is he headmaster? The owner. Uh huh. That a school director has been defying uh, children. And um, finally, the children have been fearing to report. But I think on, on the last occasion, one of the children rang his parents and they came. And then the fellow was taken there and he was, he was released on bail. And when he came, 
You know, there was a watchman who I think helped the, the, the girl to ring. He gave her the phone to ring. Now, this night watchman, they, they, they attacked him. I it was in the paper today. He was attacked. Why did you report the, the big criminal? He was attacked, the watchman. But I'm going to enter that issue now. Who gave him the bail in the first place? And who gave him the, was it police bond or was it bail? If it was bail, we shall go for the one who gave him bail. So, since you have got these strict laws, just implement them. Say, no, no, and the, and the cases you should concentrate on are homicide, rape, robbery, terrorism, but also village theft. Those, those village thefts can discourage people from, from production. People can just give up. So you should not take it right. Although theft is, is in itself not such a a big issue, but because the villagers give up easily, if we don't protect their chicken and their what, so that's why the village thieves must be must not be given the bail. And if necessary, we can even amend the law. So therefore, I think if you, I don't know what you have planned. But if, if it was me, I would take those steps. Then would, would, would the, the issue of salaries, the issue of uh, operational costs, money. But if you deploy yourself properly, you may find the money is not needed so is not so much because like these people are in the sub county. Really, the sub-counties, they should be known more or less every, every home. Uh, even the potential criminals, they should be knowing them. And they should be having a very good relationship with the, with the people. So you may, you may find this question of running up and down from the district to, to the road to the, uh, would be minimized. Will be minimized. So we may end up with a very, a very effective police force of maybe 60,000. I know the policing ratio by now we should be having about 80,000. But I discovered the Kale to recruit too many. Because you know, human beings are more expensive than machines. Human beings eat breakfast, they, they eat lunch, they also need supper, they need tea in the middle, they also fall sick, and then they have all, all these babies. The machines don't have all those problems. Once you have got your cameras, they are there. No breakfast, no lunch. <laughs> but they are watching. So I told Kari, please don't don't go for too many human beings before you, you deal with the technology. Because technology can, sometimes is uh, in the army, we call it a force multiplier. Uh, it multiplies the capacity of, of the force. It is one item, but it does the work of so many human beings. So I, I, I said, let, let's start with that. So, with the force of maybe 60,000, provided it is well laid out, and you don't waste manpower in the headquarters, you know, just moving around, with, typewriters and so on. 
if they, if they are where they are needed, you may find that you may provide police effectively with not so much manpower. Then, what of course you need to, to, to do is to supervise, because you are, you are leaders. Now, one, one work of leaders is, of effective leadership is supervision, you should supervise your people. And one way of supervising is to ask the consumers, the public, go on to ask quietly the, 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 the civilians, how are my policemen behaving? You will get free information. They will tell you. They will tell you. So that in case your policemen are misbehaving, then you are able to rectify. These are the comments which came in my head when uh, they told me to come and talk to you. I thank you. Thank you.